Good afternoon all. I'm uh, working on the penny organ again and I've got the frequency generator generating four frequencies, uh, the correct frequencies. C, D, E and F, but the other four I haven't done yet. And the coding process is quite tortuous really, so I'll take you through it. Um, I'm now working on 783.99, which is G. Uh, I have to convert that into hexadecimal using the calculator. Then, because the calculator can't turn that into binary because it's too big a word, I have to hand code it into binary. So 2 is 0010, E is 1110, 0 is 0000, and 2 is uh, 0010, but I'm not putting in the first two digits, it's just 10. 0010 because this is a 14-bit uh, word that goes into the uh, frequency register. That's actually half of it. It's actually 28 bits, but I'm coding it like this. Now I need to uh, type that in on the screen. Uh, so I've got my case 7. Let's copy that with an extra line. Uh, copy and then paste it in, where would it be, there and that becomes case 8 so this is for the next note now I need to put it in here but the 01, the first 01 is to tell it which register to put it in so these first six binary bits are uh, the six binary bits here so it's one followed by zeros, one followed by zeros, is that the right number? Yep. And then my next number is 1110, 0010. So uh, it's the whole lot. 1110, 0010. Now that should be it. So let's compile and load that into the Arduino. So now I should have a fifth note, let's try it. Oh, these uh, speakers are a bit resonant at that uh, higher frequency. But that's working. Okay, let's just do one more. Uh, right, now we're at 880 because we're at A, so 880 uh, right, what do I need to do? Let's go back to decimal, uh, cancel, so 880 uh, times a magic number in the memory, which is something to do with the ratio of the 25 megahertz clock in the oscillator and 2 to the power of 28, uh, okay, equals 9448.9. Now I'm going to do uh, convert to hex. It'll probably truncate this, so it's going to round down, which is probably not quite right for this. But it's 24E8. 24E8. Hand convert to binary. Uh, 1100. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, no, 2 is 10. That's my number. I'll put that in as my. Uh, Case nine. Right, how's that worked? Yeah, that's now A, 880 hertz. Now I've also got it so that I can hold a key. Let's not do that one. Hold it as long as I want. And when I release, it sets the frequency to zero. There is a click on each key. But uh, that's probably going to be very hard to eliminate. Right, let's put the last two in. And we're done. So I've got all eight notes. Excellent. Now I know this is not really the way to go about doing this coding. I could do all this calculation in C uh, and build an array of all the uh, data but then I've got logical um, anding and oring to do because two of the bits 
uh, that go out to the tone generator are to select the register. So I didn't want to get bogged down in all the complexity of that. I just wanted to get the thing working. So I built the um, uh, eight different case statements and they just pull in all the data that I've manually calculated, but I won't do any more of this now that I've got this basic thing working. And uh, I've just made a single bit change to the code and that's resulted in triangle waves rather than sine waves. Which just gives um, a slightly different tone. In fact, interestingly, these don't resonate quite so badly in these upper notes with the triangle wave. Yeah, so uh, possibly triangle sounds a little bit um, better on these speakers than sine. Now one thing you can't do is you can't uh, sort of slide your finger from one note to another because it doesn't hold the second note. And the reason for that is because I get a note on and then before I do a note off, I get another note on. So that's two note ons, but then that's followed by the note off from the key I've just left. And that triggers the setting of zero hertz. So you can't, you can't really do a glissando, unfortunately, but uh, I can recode it to, uh, to solve that problem. Right, I'm gonna leave it there. There's other things I need to do. I need to sort out a proper, proper plug and socket arrangement for my audio amplifier, because I've just fudged it onto two points. I've also not put any uh, DC blocking capacitor in there. So I'm relying on there being a DC blocking capacitor inside this little horrid amplifier for the speakers. Uh, so I need to sort all that out again, but I just wanted to get something to work. And he does. Cheerio.